coming back now to this idea of the series of visions, which I didn't write down all the visions, I just understood at the end it was maybe three different flashes of something that, you know, told me that triggers are being put into YouTube videos. Sound and visual, With there was an emphasis on sound. So this was, I think, on the third. Then, so now it's the seventh. So maybe about the fifth or the fourth or the fifth. This video comes up. Right, and this was a channel that I was looking at. This is a person who he's an Irish person who says that he has schizophrenia. Elliot talks psychosis. So I've watched. I was. I started to you know wonder about certain DSM diagnoses and you know feeling that some of them were linked to mind control. And I, I felt that delusional disorder was a fabricated disorder, that it doesn't exist in the real world. But I started to ask questions about schizophrenia. And the reason, main reason why was because I had known a couple people in Minneapolis, and one in particular, you know, um, I spent some time with who said that they were schizophrenic. But I know that that person that I had spent some time with was also now, in retrospect, I know that this person was involved with this, you know, this whole system around me. And so then I have to question, like, who introduced me to him? What was really going on? Was he pretending? Was he really schizophrenic? What was, what exactly was going on? So I was asking myself that question. And then I started running into these accounts online of people who say that they have these, you know, video blogs of people who say they have certain mental health disorders and I started looking at this person's videos and seeing what is the experience like of somebody who you know hears voices in because they have schizophrenia as opposed to they're getting some kind of military technology beamed at them um, and I started to question this person for a lot of reasons one had to do with his affect um, seeming so normal to me another had to do with the biggest thing that really caused me to question was his artwork. Um, because some of his artwork looked surprisingly close to stuff that I had in my journals. And I thought, you know, I wonder if they're trying to say, okay, this is, I'm a schizophrenic person. This is what a schizophrenic person's artwork looks like. Because um, schizophrenia is one of the things that they tried to diagnose me with at first, you know, any kind of psychosis. They were just trying to figure out what kind of psychosis they were going to pin on me, but it, they, they settled on delusional disorder because I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't do what they wanted me to do, which was shut up and, you know, medicate myself into oblivion. Um, so there's a couple pieces of art in here that made me go, wait a minute, what's going on here? Um, so I, I'm, I put some comments on one of his videos that I'm, I actually do want to share because they show some interesting things. Oh, even this one right here, actually, this one looks, you know, two fish. This is not any kind of, you know, very original imagery, but it looks a lot like my brother's um, birth announcement. And, you know, I wanted to, I had this bright idea to name my brother Fish Dish when I was a four-year-old when he was born. And then my dad made a birth announcement for my brother that looked like this because he was Pisces. Um, but this is just once. There's actually m more examples that are really close to and more unique original types of things that are close to things that I've put into my journals. Um, there's another schizophrenia blog by, I think it's just called Schizophrenia on it, by a, a young woman and also shows a lot of artwork. Um, I don't understand what this I mean it almost seems like they're trying to say hey look we do art and we have schizophrenia um, because there was a f there's a famous series of paintings of cats that was used both in I've seen it both in art books and in psychology books where the person is supposedly you know descending into psychosis and his cat drawings get weirder and weirder and this is a very to me this is actually a really scary kind of thing to actually say your art is weird and therefore you probably are psychotic, you know, that's a pretty, that's, I mean, talk about Nazi stuff. That's pretty, that's pretty high level scary because then it means as an artist, you're being inhibited from being creative because you're so, you've got to be so concerned that anything you say or write is going to be used as evidence 
to frame you as psychotic. And in some cases, you know, that is what happens. In my case, that seems to be what's going on. So I hypothesize that this person might be faking it. He might not be schizophrenic. That this whole, you know, thing, and I'm, I can talk about motivations later. Um, he must have seen what I had written because actually in this one, which I only wrote, watched part of, he talked about, you know, why would you fake something like this? So that is a good question. It's not one without an answer, but it's bigger than just one person deciding to do it. It's something bigger than that. And I think it's related to mind control. But anyway, this one came up two days ago, so shortly after I had the stream, and I went and I started to listen to this one and what I and watch it, right? And what I saw here, so you can see he has this big microphone, and I started to hear as he was talking this it sounded like some sort of distortion or interference, like an electronic interference as he was talking, like in the background. Now it's possible, okay, so I'm I'm thinking to myself, they're going to put triggers in videos according to this dream that I had. And I've seen triggers on YouTube, visual triggers and stuff like that before, so it doesn't surprise me. But what my question was, are they going to do it for my benefit? If so, they'll probably find a video that I'm apt to watch. And this was one of them because I had been, you know, looking at this lately. Um, and then another question is, how are they going to do it? And then another question is, is he doing it? Or is it be happening in a different way? So when I first listened to this, I heard these sounds in the background like that. Like there was something wrong with the microphone. Um, now I've come back today and listened to it and I don't hear that. I do hear a little bit of distortion at certain points in the video, like a little bit of a weird echo or distortion, but nothing like what I had heard before. So what that suggests to me is that he didn't do any of this, that this was actually done after the fact through YouTube. Uh, and I've seen evidence that YouTube has done this another, I mean, obviousness. So for example, I'll, I'll pull up a page of thumbnails of videos and all of a sudden one thumbnail for just a split second, just long enough for me to see it, flashes to like a scary hollow-eyed doll face. And then it goes back to the normal thumbnail. Just enough to flash and give you like a, a trigger. Um, that YouTube has to have been the one that did that. And I think YouTube is the one that affected the, the audio on this also. Um, because it's gone now, from what I can tell. Now, it's possible that he also has said things. I remember at one point in this video, he says two seconds really quick, and he doesn't even, I don't know why he says it, but, you know, it's possible that things like that could be going on, too, that he could be deliberately or even being, you know, beamed into, you know, saying or doing something that's triggering. Um, so it's, you know, even if the triggers are there, you know, and even if you can identify them, you know, how do they actually occur and who's responsible for them? Is it not an easy question to ask or and it's not an easy question to answer you can't really leap to conclusions because there's so many different ways to do things and in fact you know when I saw the flash vision of a triggering image maybe YouTube didn't do that maybe that was actually done through somebody who has access to YouTube but wasn't actually working on behalf of YouTube I mean Possibly it could have been just been done locally on my computer, although I doubt that. It looks like something that was done through the database. Now here's another video where I think it's linked to mind control. Um, she just calls herself schizophrenic. A big sort of tell as far as the mind control part of this is this weird figure that she uses as her thumbnail. I mean, I don't know why on earth would she do this. I mean, she's got her face on the videos, but she's, you know, doesn't put her face on the thumbnail. She puts this strange doll-like creature. And then she has this interesting telephone booth here. On one side it says telephone, on the other side it says cash. Why that? She likes these colors, these pale pink colors. Um, pastel pink types of things and you see this in her artwork and her artwork also is you know um, sort of symbolically telling and it reminds me of some artwork that I saw in a coffee shop nearby that was really obviously about trauma-based mind control so when I uh, 
this was even before I had this dream about the triggers. Um, let me see what actual specific video it was. It was this video here. I started to look at this a little bit and I felt extremely triggered. And I don't, I, I, I feel that I was feeling triggered because of a directed energy attack, not just what I was seeing in the video. But I do think that what she's doing in this video, what she's wearing in this video is specifically triggering. And it's this black and white, this black sweatshirt with these white hash mark things on it. There's something about this color scheme and the patterns. And then, um, you know, she has in the background, I mean, I actually wrote a complaint about a psychiatrist who deliberately misdiagnosed me. And in my complaint, I complained that the doctor had um, butterfly paintings all over. I said that butterfly paintings could be triggering for somebody who's been through trauma-based mind control because I had been in this place and they were using all this butterfly stuff and I didn't understand why. I mean, I understood it was linked to mind control, but I, I didn't understand why butterflies were being used for behavioral health centers in general, and this one it's specifically. Um, she has these things over here, which are kind of like something that was in the bathroom in my house growing up. You know, I mean, any one of these things could be a coincidence. She has a strange little mask thing over here with hollow eyes. Any one of these things could be a coincidence, but all of them piled together in the background, these pink handles, scissors, and all of this stuff. Whales. I really feel like um I really feel like this is set up to create a triggering response and I have not watched much of her stuff because I felt such a physio physiological response to just watching a little bit of this video that I haven't come back and tried to watch her stuff but I have looked at some of the imagery a little bit and you'll see that her eyes are red not just in this video but in lots of her videos maybe even all of them one person commented, um, oh, you can tell she's been crying, but that's only if she's been crying in every single video she's made. What this looks to me like is directed energy attacks that happened when I was being attacked with a certain type of directed energy attack overnight. I would wake up in the morning and my eyes would look exactly like this. It's a specific type of red eye. It's, you know, it's not, she doesn't, it could be from medication, but it's just this weird kind of pink tone all over in the white part of your eye. It's from a directed energy attack. So directed energy is linked with mind control. Butterflies are linked with mind control. Um, masks and all kinds of stuff like the in, in this in the scene here, and even strong colors like this, strong stark color schemes like black and white are linked with mind control. So what is she really doing, and why is she really doing it? And why are all these, you know, supposed people who say that they have schizophrenia are artists? Is that just the nature of schizophrenia? Or is it just something that they're trying to present? And is schizophrenia even a real thing? That's worth asking. Because it seems to get described in different ways at different times by, you know, it just, I mean, would you know it if you saw it? It seems like the most distinctive part of this, supposedly, is hearing voices, which is totally something that can be done with technology, frequency-based technology. But um, what is it? I mean, I'm, and I haven't studied schizophrenia itself, but I, I really strongly suspect that, you know, regardless of whether schizophrenia is real, that um, these folks are playing a role. And so then, yeah, the question is, why are they doing it? What are they getting out of it? Um, are they being, maybe, are they being rewarded? Are they not just being rewarded, but are they also being coerced is a question I have. Um, because that's kind of what mind control is about. It's about controlling people and essentially enslaving them. And it seems to be largely about getting people enslaved before they even realize they're enslaved. And then getting them tied up in such a way that they feel they can't get out of it. And then you get to tell them what to do.